I'll go back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 2018 video tutorial. Now in this tutorial, as I'm sure as always the title gives it away, we are talking about editing raw images. Now what is Camera Raw? Camera Raw is shooting a photograph with your digital camera and it is an uncompressed image. Now, uncompressed images uh, are just that. So you're capturing all of the detail, the color and everything with that image. As opposed to a JPEG file, the JPEG file compresses the image. So the camera does its very best ability and most cameras are extremely good at this today where it allows the image to be compressed to a smaller file size. And there's some things, you know, we, well, there's a few things we can't do with that image once it is compressed. Um, any more of those are getting more and more limited. There's a lot we can do in the editor. But I want you to understand that a raw image is an uncompressed image. Now, the file extension, and a lot of people don't understand this either, but a file extension is different for each camera manufacturer. So if you're shooting, such as what I shoot is the Sony uh, Digital, I shoot an A6000, it is a .ARW. If you're shooting Canon RAW, it's .CR2. And then there's a Canon RAW CIFF image, which is a .CRW. Um, a Kodak, I don't know if you're shooting Kodak Digital, is a .DCR. And another very popular camera that I really love is the uh, uh, the Nikon Electronic Format Raw Image is a .NEF. So this list I will post with this uh, video. So in case you uh, shoot a different kind of camera than what was mentioned, you can by all means bring up this list and see what the extension is uh, of your camera and see um, what it would be if you're shooting a raw image. So let's go ahead and minimize this out of the way. Now these are some photographs uh, when we were in Hawaii a few years ago. And these photographs I shot in Camera Raw. So if we have, this happens to be the uh, Photoshop Elements 2018 organizer. And in your organizer, if you click on a photograph and you come over to the right and click on information, you can see where this is a .NEF. All right, so this was shot with my Nikon camera. At the time we were shooting a Nikon D600. So this was shot with a Nikon camera. Now what's really nice about the camera raw image is we can go ahead and we're going to open this in Photoshop Elements 2018. And we'll bring that up here. And when we open that up, we can see at the top it says Nikon D600. That's the camera I said that we shot this with. Camera raw. Uh, 10.2. This is something very important. If you buy a newer camera, make sure that you update your Photoshop elements to make sure that it has the latest abilities for the RAW for your new camera. Because as new cameras come out, they might have to update their software so your camera will work. So why is Camera RAW so much more sought after than shooting in JPEG? Well, first of all, you can see the overall picture is sort of dark. And the white balance here is says as shot. But we can click the pull down menu and we can change it just like we can change the settings in our camera. So we can change this to daylight. And you didn't see much change in the picture. Change it to cloudy. But you can tell at the top the histogram is actually moving. Change it to shade. Tungsten lighting, you can see now where we get that very cooling effect on the photograph. Fluorescent, flash, or you can change it to a custom white balance. What the custom white balance allows us to do is take the eyedropper tool, pick on something that's white or gray, click on it, and you can see where the overall photograph then is corrected based on the custom white balance of where you're clicking at. So let's just go back up here to as shot and change that back. 
And we can adjust all the sliders here to affect our photograph without going into the actual editor and doing this all by hand or by hand in the editor by adding layers or adjustment layers. So we can work with the temperature. We can warm it up or we can cool it down. And go back here. And you notice if I pull it over and if I double click on it, it will go back to where it was when we first started. The tint, same way, we can take the tint down, we can double click it and put it right back. You have an auto exposure where you can auto it and then that will give your overall picture the best guess from Photoshop Elements. We can raise the exposure or lower it. Right, that generally helps a little bit there. You can lower the contrast or raise the contrast. And all this again is before the photograph is actually handed off to the editor. So think of this as a as a go between between your organizer and the full editor. We can bring your shadows down or up. The same with the whites in this area back in here. The whites, we can play with the whites. We can bring those down or up. We're going to actually bring those down a bit. Just so we can see more. There's actually a mountaintop right in the back, back there. Clarity. You can bring your clarity up. You can see where we can pull out more detail of that photograph just by getting our clarity up. The vibrance. To me, vibrance is almost a hand-in-hand -hand with saturation. Let's bring vibrance up just a little bit right there. And then, of course, your saturation, you can desaturate it or you can oversaturate it. And bring it back down just a little bit, right about there. So you can see we're still editing in the raw format. At the top here, you can also crop the photograph if you want to do any cropping. We can straighten the photograph if it's slightly crooked. We can actually straighten the photograph out. You have a red eye removal tool, which these days it's getting to be the point where we don't use that a whole lot anymore. Uh, you may get red eye. Sometimes you do in pets, especially, it seems like. Open the preferences dialog. This will give you some preferences. Save image settings in and it'll be an XMP file. An XMP file actually is the same, I believe, that you're getting in Lightroom. So it's saving your adjustments in a file. If that file is not kept with the photo, you will actually lose these settings. Apply sharpening to all images, preview images only. Apply auto tone and color adjustments. These can be default image settings. So whenever you open up camera raw, these would happen. Make default specific to camera serial number. Make default specific to camera ISO settings. DNG file handling. Ignore sidecar XMP files. And update embedded JPEG previews. So these are the, the default settings. These are some DNG settings. Click Cancel. These you can actually rotate your image 90 degrees to the left or to the right. And this over here is actually toggling full screen mode. So we can go to full screen mode so you can really work on your photograph and see the whole entire picture. Very nice when you're editing. I find this very nice, especially for wedding pictures after I shoot a wedding and I want to bring them up in here. Now, to be honest, I do a lot of that work in Lightroom uh, just because I can do multiple pictures at one time and I find it to be easier to do it in Lightroom. Let's toggle that back down. Down here we have cycles between before and after. And let's see what else we have over here. Over here we can actually uh, blow the photograph up so you can see more detail. Let's just say 60%. You can see there where we can blow it up. You can then use the hand tool and we can move the photograph around if we're looking to bring more detail. Let's take it back down to like 25%. There we go. 
blow it up a little bit there. So once you get all of your adjustments done in your camera raw editor, and you say, okay, that's that's all my initial detailed uh, edits that I wanted to do to make that photograph look uh, pleasing to me, we can either just save the image, we don't have to do anything more to it, click on done, apply changes and dismiss the dialog without opening the image, cancel of course, or we can open the image. If we open the image, what's going to happen is it's going to take all those changes and again open it up into your Photoshop elements in the expert mode so you can start doing your editing, work with your layers, and do whatever other touch-ups you wish to do to this photograph. So folks, I hope this helped you a little bit. I've received a ton of emails asking about raw images, why I want to shoot raw, you know, what is raw images? Uh, people just don't understand it. Um, seems like a lot of people just want to throw their cameras in into a, um, a JPEG file mode and just go shooting. Uh, and that's fine. I did that on a cruise on a vacation. And you will find that your memory card obviously will hold many more photos in JPEG mode because it compresses it. That's one other thing I could tell you about a raw image is that the file format, the file its size itself will be a little larger. So make sure you have uh, you know a few extra memory cards on hand and um, you will be good to go. So folks, if you want to learn even more about Photoshop elements, check out my lessons, my online, I call them a lesson or course, or don't think of them as over dramatic as being hard. Uh, the new one is Photoshop Elements 15, and there's 80 video tutorials in there for only $25. At this time, it's only $25. Um, I actually have a big discount going on right now with the courses. Uh, today is March the 21st, 2018, uh, when I'm recording this. So I don't know how when you'll view this or how long that's going to be going on. But if you go to jtclearning.com, jtclearning, all one word, .com, you can sign up for those courses today, and you can start taking them right away. They're sitting there for you, and once you're a member, you're going to be a member for life in there for your particular course. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button and catch all these shows so you can learn more about Photoshop elements and photography in general. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time here on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.